here at the moment. Yeah, from the bottom half of my yeah. head. And so keep the weight line as well? Yeah, I think yeah. so. And then take this shorter up here. Okay, so when you say this shorter... Like... It's almost like, I don't want it going shorter all the way down. Yeah, but how short? I don't know, because I still want to be able to see that it's styled. But at the moment, if you style that up, yeah. it's too long. So if I take it to there? Yeah, I think so. Okay. And then, so... But I think short around this kind of area. Yeah, so, so just keep it. So that bit long, yeah. but then having a short fringe underneath it, so length falls on top of a short fringe. Yeah, and then keeping undercut? Yeah. Okay, but I'll tidy that one up. Yeah. Um, and I might keep the length of your undercut there. Yeah. Because if it's going shorter there and goes too short there, it just keeps yeah. the balance of the cut. So around about this length. I think so, yeah. And then, so around here, taking that quite short yeah. and round layers and then through the front we're literally projecting out so yeah. that this becomes longer and then how deep do you want this little fringe or mini fringe well i want to be able to see the mini fringe and then hair to kind of fall on top of it like quite choppy on top how short so if uh, i were to say it started at that and if we wanted to go bigger we would then just increase it whilst we're doing it okay so how short so i reckon there yeah cool so if that goes to there, then that's going to sit. Yep, yeah, okay. Does that work? Um, you may not have like enough length to cover it, so it may need to go just slightly shorter. Okay. Because if you look at it, you want it to go that way. Yeah. And that's sitting uh, over yeah. the top. Okay. Is, there's yeah. not a, as much weight in through there. Yeah. Okay. And then I'd like to keep the, le the length or the weight through here yeah, I think a bit so. longer. So it's just this area. Yeah. That's actually cut shorter and then gone through. Yeah. Okay. I hope no one asks for this. <laughs> Why? Because you're worried you can do it. Yeah, well, no, it'd be like, oh my god, then I'd have to have an attempt. That's alright, there'll be a video you can watch. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. This is ultimate creative cutting, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. Okay. Hide the Hayley Sheen. Um, so, I'll go back here. So, a lot of people use these big combs and they come in college kits. Now, that's a great big comb. This is a much smaller comb. Now, I use, I think there's seven inch scissors or six, six inch scissors. So my six inch scissors are covering all of that area of the comb. When you go to do things, if you've got this much further, it takes you that much more brain power and coordination to deal with picking that up at that extra distance. And so much so for me, it's completely unnatural. So if you're learning to cut hair or if you're cutting hair and you want to speed up, get these combs. I'm not sure how long they are, but they are the shorter combs. Wide tooth, fine tooth, obviously. These ones, ditch them. They're not worth it. Don't let me, mum. <laughs> So uh, one of the things that people do when they're doing combing, they're trying to get a section, they go like this. And then they go, oh yeah. And then they get it all out. And okay, that's fine, you can get there. But you've got a comb, you've got all of these little prongs that are there, comb it through, find your section, then take the whole comb into that point, move it down. Now I'm really, when people start working for me, if they're not already doing this, I always point it out. And some people like make this change like that and become really popular stylists really quickly. And it's simply because if you're looking at that line from outside the shop or the other side of the shop, instantly you look professional. So if you're going through your EPA or an assessment at college, or if you're doing a trade test or any of those things where you wanna really look professional from the word go, get your lines clean, although that one's not very clean but get your lines clean and get your sections clean and suddenly you look really, really good at what you're doing and that gives clients confidence or employers or assessors, gives them confidence in the work you're doing while you're doing it. So that's just a little tidy tip. But back here again, now I've got again the guide from there and there, there's this bit. So I'm just gonna take this a bit more because, just because I wasn't thinking too well. So there's this to come off. Just double check. There's our other guide. So 
I'm gonna go up to that part. Uh, because I've been gloving away, we've dried out a bit. So again, through here. When you're cutting hair as well, like you'll see a lot of older hairdressers who will like drop one hip or their feet won't be straight or they won't be sort of what you would think is like in really good positions for you know the health and safety and your occupational health and safety um, and what you'll find is that they've cut hair for so long that they find this natural place in their body but if you're starting to cut hair both feet squared up with your shoulders um, when I first started teaching and I've been teaching now for well, coming up this year, it'll be formally 20 years. When I first started, I had to go through and relearn how to stand because I'd been cutting already for 10, 15 years and I naturally drop a hip and go like this and stick my butt out, all that kind of thing. And if you're doing that as a teacher, then your students are going to copy that. And if your students are copying that, then you, just by the way that you're doing your job, is being copied by people that may end up with hip problems and other occupational problems. Like for instance, I have pretty bad RSI in my hands, so you might see them sort of clicking along a bit. Um, and what you get is like, for instance, I go quite regularly and I have to have basically this whole hip beaten up by a masseur, who's very good at it and it's great to do, but that's because I spent all my time sticking my hip out. So careful with that one. So again, I'm going to just cross check and through there. So now I'm going back again to the bottom. Now, I've come to this side, I can either bring it all back and cut there like that, or the other option, bring it out, take the same degree of angle, and then cut through. And you should get to a point at the end. Now, the other thing I should point out too is that if you're working in a shop where the boss is a bit older, like me, you know, probably middle-aged now, and has like years of experience. Um, I've personally, I've been doing this for, I think 35 years now, 34, since I was 16. And if your boss isn't cutting hair anymore, do not ever make the assumption that they can't cut hair because they've probably done 20 years of what you've been doing for six months or a year or a couple of years. Um, and certainly I've had staff in the past who've been like, oh, he doesn't really know how to cut hair, who's going to teach me this? Not realising that actually they can cut hair very well. What you're effectively doing by having that approach to it is you're dismissing 30 years worth of experience that's in front of you for free. And you're being paid. You're being paid to watch your boss. You're being paid to learn from the people around you. And if you've got people who are have those kind of years in the industry watch them don't dismiss them just because they might not be cutting hair at the moment their business may be at a point where rightfully they're like I can't work and I don't want to work on the floor anymore because they want to work on the business um, so that's just a little tip if you're starting out somewhere so I'm gonna go through now and literally cross-check my cut all the way through and I should probably some oil on but literally it's not, that bad. it's not actually it's a lot better than it was again i've done this cut just by following one guide one guide second guide section one section two guide section three section four then five six seven eight and i literally i'm pretty sure in fact i know there's not going to be a corner in here anywhere and I know that because I followed the rules that I was taught to do it, where you're finding a guide with a guide to a guide, 
and that is one of the ways in which you can precision cut around Maya's haircut. So to continue, I'm just going to get some more water going. So I want to protect your makeup. Always protect your makeup. <laughs> It's a lot more important than you realise. <laughs> so always, always protect the makeup. So we're going to create underneath in this little section here a really what I would call a mini fridge. Where I grew up, there was other words for it that weren't very nice. They're inappropriate. Nice. They're inappropriate. Um, you call it a micro fringe. Micro fringe is a very good way of describing it. So I'm just going to take all of this section back. Now, I'm not going to cut this right now because of that. That is two hairs that should not be in this section. So all that up and out the way. And again, a little bit more water, protect. <laughs> So if you're doing a traditional fringe, and I'll do a video on fringes again, I'll put that up there, um, and you can link to it and watch it. Watch it in full, because that helps me. Please, I'm showing you this, please help me. Um, so basically, in, with a, a traditional fringe that is, wants to sit around about here, you literally bring the hair down, sit your fingers in the nook of the nose, cut. Once that's cut and dried, if it's straight, assuming, that should sit around about here. And that is sort of a little rule that you can use when it comes to fringes. But in this one, we're going all the way up. Now, there's a lot of people doing a lot of freehand. Stop it. Now, I'm going to go short. So I'm going to start short. Again, tension in my hands. Turn my comb around. Now, you might notice that my scissors, when I'm working, sometimes the blades open as I'm combing. I have what a lot of old hairdressers have, which is carpal tunnel, and that's why I've got scars here. But also, I have very sort of bad um, repetitive strain because I've been doing this for so long. And again, just get those little ones out. Um, so my scissors are as loose as a goose. They literally, this bolt in here is loosened off so that they open up really, really quickly. That helps me to do this without getting strain on my hands. So once I've done that, I'm going to bring it. Do you want it to come around to the sides? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Again, a really small section, lots of tension, and I'm going to take that corner off. And you can't see it because of where the video is and where I'm doing it, but I'm actually aiming that at the ear and I'm using the body parts just to give me a general guide of where I'm going. Although don't assume that anyone's body parts are symmetrical because very, very few people have symmetrical heads. Now I'm gonna go freehand and I'm only gonna go freehand now because I've got a guide cut in and I wanna just take this to the right edge of the now, what should happen now is I'm just going to go to the parting. And parting's are really important for, hair, for clients, ultimately, because it's their head again. Remember, it's all about them. I did my mum's hair once. My mum said to me, that's not where my parting is. I said, I'm just moving it to be able to cut hair. She went, no, and I've never cut my mum's hair ever again. And actually, if you want to get out of cutting your mum's hair, great way to do it. Um, literally you take the rest of it and it should sit over the top now we might we might actually do this off camera because well maybe not we'll cut it out we don't like it hmm. again it's not my haircut so yeah. that's short enough is that enough in there i think so because it's going to bounce up anyway yeah the, the little fringe is going to have a lot yeah. more on it because it's shorter so the shorter the hair the more it bounce but i do think a little bit thicker with the short hair so a little bit thicker on the yeah. little fringe right Again, these adjustments are your client's adjustments based on your opinion. You should be communicating with your client the whole way through. And, you know, Jess here is 
a very experienced, high performing manager and hairdresser, you know, and a, um, I would normally, if I was cutting this hair, be talking to my client about her color, because her color needs a refresh soon. See that? I'd normally be talking about how often she comes in, because the more frequent you can get your client, the more successful you are. Um, and then I'd be talking about what's going on in the world. So take this guide, there it is. And you notice this is not a very big, it's not very much bigger as a section because you know the rule is you can only, you can't put it back on, you can only cut it off. So the two hairs. I'm just going to come around here. Thanks, Jess. Now, if you want to get really creative, and Jess may want to do this next time, you could actually take that section all the way through there. Again, getting your lines nice and straight. Carry that line through, all the way through to the undercut. I've done that before, it does look quite cool, but you've got to let people build up to those kind of things. So, better? Yeah, thank you. So, if we come round to the back now, we're just gonna go through, and I'm just gonna get my little clips. So, once we've completed the haircut, there's one thing that I always like to do with clients, which is, I'll hold your coffee, run your hands through it. So what you're doing is you're making sure that the client's happy with the work you've done. You can be happy, but it means nothing unless the client's happy. Giving the client control of the haircut, the finish, how it lengths, all of those things means you end up with more clients who are fans. And it's one of the things that I've noticed over the years that's missing in the industry. Some salons do it and do it very effectively. We have some superb competition here in Bristol because they do this very, very well. And that is they allow the client to have control over what they want in the end. And if any adjustments need doing, they go and do them. So, you happy with that? Yeah. Length's okay? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Because I'll style the fringe underneath so it kind of curves a little bit. Yeah, and then so you have the curl on you still have yeah. a difference. So what I'm gonna do now is just go through and clean up my perimeter. And you notice I'm not cleaning my perimeter until this is finished. So I'm not just going from that to that. And then, you know, I'm, I'm letting the client control where we're at and what we're doing. So you're happy with the length at the back? Yeah. And are you happy for me just to soften the line at the back and just yeah. clear out underneath? And then- I'm a, just gonna um, grow that out. You're just gonna grow that out? Yeah. Are you gonna grow a mullet? Yeah. Get in. Really? Yeah. Okay, it's my mullet. Okay. All right. It's not really my mullet, it's her mullet, but what I'm really saying there is that I'm cutting the mullet. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pop the scissors down and get out our old um, trimmers. So here, you can use your comb and your trimmers, and literally all you're doing is cleaning lines off. You're not taking any length, you're not changing where the hair sits and where it goes. So the little ones like that. And you bring it down. Now, if you want to and the client's happy with it, you can then go over with a razor and take that off with a razor. Um, but, you know, with Jess we don't, because we, we trim Jess's hair probably once every three weeks, two, three weeks. And that's the thing, like, if you're a hairdresser and you need your hair cut and coloured every three weeks, do you not think your clients need it every three weeks? Possibly they do. So following on from there, I'm not gonna follow my line across, I'm gonna create my line through the side 
and I appreciate this is probably hard to see on the video. But Jess's hair has this little quirk that this side grows just slightly longer than the other side, which is probably nothing she's really ever noticed before. But as the guy cuts her hair, I notice it and have done for quite some time. You can then go in underneath, just to see that underneath, so you're clearing out the leaf, the hair, and leaving the pieces above the hair. One final thing I'm going to do is that from the previous haircut, Jess has a little undercut. So, and if you notice with the undercut, straight lines. So, if we go under here, I'm just going to take this and just going to check that straight. Now, that to me is fine because it's straight and it's a bit soft. So, for me, that's okay. This is where you start to do your freehand. I was always taught too, when doing freehand, if you're gonna do freehand, don't just go in and go like that you should always have an anchor point on the head or on the body when you're doing it. For instance, like that, I'm just gonna take this little line out slightly. Because you've got that anchor point, if the client moves for whatever reason, you're gonna sneeze, you know, cough, whatever, they might just wanna lean over and get their, their coffee. It means that you're really quick to feel it, so therefore you can move out of it really quickly. So just through, oh, drop the phone. So there we are, that's a precision cut round layers. We've got shorter layers through here to allow us to have a lot more body and volume through the back. We've cut into existing haircuts around the sides, so not really touched that at all. And we've allowed it to be longer through the front whilst creating a little mini fringe, which, well, we've done a few, haven't we? Yeah. So they're starting to become popular again, you know, which is great. It's like, if we start doing all the stuff we did in the 80s, oh, <laughs> perms. There we go. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit the bell to get notified. And what's the other one I need to do? Like. Ah, like it. Thank you. Oh, and please share the crap out of it. I don't care who sees it. Go see it. If you've got any comments on it, feel free to comment in the bottom. If you think I'm full of it and you don't like what I'm doing, say so. It's fine. I'm happy to be like talking about it. But if you want any more or if you've got anything that you want to see specifically, if you're a student or a manager or a teacher or anything like that, just you know, DM me or put it in the comments and I'm more than happy to do other videos on other things. Thanks for watching.